and we started the show off with the world title, the with, yeah, the, with the world champion uh, title was not on the line. Um, but I mean, probably for Kenny's benefit because Alan Angels was pushing him at times. It was shocking for me to see the best bout machine really tested uh, like he was. Sure. Um, really struggled to put away. Uh, five from uh, the Dark Order. And, you know, we are big advocates of the Dark Order here, but it was really shocking to me how long this match went, given how, you know, what the pedigree that Kenny has. Sure. Um, I was impressed, though, uh, with, again, I know a lot of accolades are going to go towards uh, five Allen Angels for, you know, going toe-to-toe with Kenny. And we've seen a lot of these types of instances in the past where, you get to see, you know, kind of a guy who doesn't get that shot go against Kenny and shine. Um, but I was I was really impressed by Kenny in this match, man. Just Kenny's ability to be so creative. Um, he's always his his offense, you know, especially for being a main guy, right? Um, we've grown up in an era, you know, basically our whole lives where a lot of these top stars, um, once they get to that top spot, they they kind of dial back their offense try to make their, their offense, their matches more safe so that they can stay on top for a longer period of time. They're not putting their body through that terror that can, you know, if they're always going at 110 miles an hour. One of the things I love about Kenny is that he's not like that. He's right. not going to have the five moves of doom um, <laughs> that we've seen before. This is a guy who, you know, again, almost every single time you see him, he finds a new way to be creative, to, to make his offense – fit in the natural pacing and story of a match he's not someone who is uh point, ever gonna be, he's never you know his stuff doesn't feel formulaic he really does feel like an artist in the ring and you know he's able to adapt and to move and to be fluid with his partner in the ring and it it, it really creates entertaining compelling matchups um i know i'm preaching to the choir when i when i sing kenny's praises to you though right yeah, you're preaching it all the way from no. <laughs> uh, love that as well, man. Uh, so, yeah, you know, what I love about what AEW has consistently done and consistently will do is just like re the long term storytelling. You know, I there's been so much that happens on AEW television. You forget about some of the stuff. And I forgot about, you know, the match that they've had before and, you know, Alan Angel's debut. And so you know on paper when you see this tweet and you're like wait why are these two teams going or why are these two guys going toe-to-toe tonight on dynamite leading up to full gear and then they tie it in and make it meaningful and like it's not just some random roll the dice you know opponent in a sense so um it was nice to see alan get that that spotlight and yeah. an opening match for sure and it is so fun kenny is so good and so i hope when he loses the title that we don't lose that lose Kenny Omega for any reason. I thought, hope he can go straight into a feud with Budge or someone like that. So <laughs> someone who can really push him to the limits in the ring. Yeah. I yeah, mean, that's a great oh, point. Actually, I mean, with the stuff first, got start with Brian Danielson. Order. Yeah. Get that, of course. get that feud with Brian Danielson for a while. And then ultimately slow play that uh, elite breakup. And so he can go toe to toe. And so I, uh, I think that's for, that would make for a nice long six, three to six month story with that kind of, uh, feud for that but the biggest part i mean you know kenny omega was gonna put alan angels out with the chair but we saw cowboy shit coming out right there man to Ooh. save the day title in hand is this looking into the crystal ball what we're gonna see in ted days where uh the hangman is gonna be lifting that gold over his head for the first time passing the torch i mean we all think so and it would be quite the surprise if uh you know hangman did not leave full gear with gold and so uh, the momentum is riding high, timing is perfect, and it it makes perfect sense to shift Kenny into, uh, you know, to be that best bout machine in the ring. You know, it doesn't have to be about the gold. And that way, Hangman, you can have this red hot baby face yeah. cowboy shit. You know how many T-shirts he's gonna sell? Nah, uh, so it's gonna it's perfect timing. So all in for that one as well. Yeah, yeah I, I like where your where your head's at. I mean, I think that um, the writing's been on the wall for a long time. That it, you know, it just felt it felt right that you know, Hangman's story would end, or really this chapter of Hangman's story would end, and a new chapter would begin with him beating Kenny 
mm-hmm. for the title. I, I feel and, and it feels full gear is the perfect place for that to happen. Um, it just feels like everything is coming into into focus. Um, you know, the 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 elite that Kenny's normal, the the team that he can always count on to have his back. Yep. They're they're now getting a little distracted. They're getting themselves into into trouble. Where you know sure. we're seeing Adam Cole running his mouth in a way that very few can. Um, starting trouble. You know we saw the Bucks getting beaten down um, really brutally, um, sure, getting, getting destroyed by your guy Luchasaurus and Christian. Um, you know. You see these things starting to happen on the on the side. Slowly, all the the the, the typical, you know, cheat you know the advantages that Kenny has in his back pocket are slowly mm-hmm. starting to be eliminated and slowly slowly starting to be fall by the wayside. And it you know with the Dark Order um, in Hangman's corner. The odds, if anything, don't seem to even – I mean, it's starting to really turn towards Hangman here as far as him having the advantage of the year. Finally, the elite kind of are put in, on a, in a spot where they're no longer able to play the numbers game. Um, and I think that that will, like you said, I think it will lead to not only a great chapter for Hangman coming up as a champion, yep. but I think a new interesting chapter for Kenny because, yeah. you know, as champion – it, it does put him in a position where he is protected in some ways. Um, this would allow you to have other other feuds and other matches where the, maybe the finish isn't so obvious. And, you know, you could have him going against guys who he could trade some wins and losses with um, in order to help build them up um, sure. and build up the feud. So, you know, that creative freedom opens up a lot. And we've seen that happen, you know, with other characters. I mean, I'm wearing a shirt right now, Moxley. Yeah. You know, he, he went – when he lost the championship, he's kind of teetered in between, like, you know, being a top star and falling by the wayside. And that started to become part of his character arc. Um, it certainly would be interesting to see, I think, what happens. I've been saying this for a long time, especially when Ad, now that Adam Cole is is in the fold. Right. What will happen to Kenny when he loses the title? Um, what will you know? Where will his ego and mystique and and how can you know with the elite, the Bucks no longer having the belts, yep. Kenny not having the belts? Do they start looking at each other and start you know? Is there some of that infighting that would then happen? And you know, we know that that would create some really compelling stuff. So, I think that there's a lot there. <laughs>